Well, it's April, NAB is on, and I want to do a roundup of all of the new and interesting film technology that's gonna be available in the next couple of months. So the big news is two new cameras, not from Canon, but from Blackmagic. The first is a box camera, which is basically a Pocket Cinema Pro, but instead of being wide, it's forward, it's shaped much more like a cinema camera. It's the Pixis 6K. It's only uh, $3,200, which really just Blackmagic's version of a Komodo for $2,000 cheaper. Will it have decent dynamic range, which is something that the Blackmagic cameras had always lacked, but it really is just a new evolution of the pocket camera away from the very weird DSLR format to a more um, cinema format. Uh, the much more interesting camera was the Blackmagic Design Ursa Cine. This is also full frame, but shoots 12K resolution. Has all kinds of interesting things built in like ND, folding five inch monitor, and for all intents and purposes is Blackmagic's version of the Canon C500 Mark II or the Sony FX9. What was super interesting is that they're saying that there will be a large format version, a 65 mil, 70 mil version, which will be 17K resolution. It will be one of the first available to buy cinema cameras, uh, the Alexa 65 being rental only. Ursi Cine is gonna be, I think 15,000 or just under 15,000. So around the same price as the Canon C500 Mark II when it was launched, it's now about 11 grand. But it's good to see Blackmagic bringing in the upper end because they have had a huge array of lower end cameras. But if you wanted to go into more commercial productions, you had to change camera brands. And now this will be something that people who started in Blackmagic can, can upgrade into um, a more professional, uh, more fully featured camera. Also from Blackmagic is a new updated micro panel, which is something I'm definitely gonna get because the existing micro panel was much too big to fit on my desktop. I've used it a couple times, but this micro panel actually looks quite micro. It's you know just a little bit bigger than a keyboard, but still has wheels and will be able to give you a much more tactile feel uh, when you're editing without taking up your whole desk. DJI previewed two new Ronins, uh, but also much more interesting for me and for other you know, non-gimbal users was their new follow focus system, which uses the LiDAR system that you needed the Ronin for, but takes the Ronin away so you can just connect it to your camera. A couple of YouTubers did an amazing breakdown of this and sort of showed everything it can do. It's using some kind of AI technology to recognize faces and keep them in focus. It seems to be the long promised dream of autofocus for cine lenses. I'll leave a link in the description to that video. Uh, it's gonna be like $1,000, so um, relatively affordable. Definitely get my hands on that and try it with my, my Sumi Rays and my Cine Primes. Uh, Shape, who are best known for their camera cages and accessories, are releasing a 15,000 watt hour power supply. This thing weighs 400 pounds uh, and will basically take the place of a big generator and power your entire film set. Waterproof and comes with these wheels to roll around though. You're gonna need a couple people to move this thing, I think. Uh, Old Fast Glass, which is a rental house in LA who I've rented from, they're really nice people, have rehoused a Fujifilm GFX 100 Mark II into a cage body to turn it into much more of a large format cinema camera. It has displays, it has fans, it has V-mount battery and gold mount battery options. When I first saw this, I thought they had actually built a new camera, but they actually it is really just a elaborate cage around the Fujifilm uh, with outputs and make it, basically rigging it up as something large format. Uh, this is kind of a, a kludge, I guess. The, the Fujifilm uh, GFX 100 isn't a true cinema camera. It doesn't have all the things you need cinema cameras to have, like false color and SDI, but it at least gives someone a chance to uh, shoot large format if that's what they need. Bebop showed off a battery plate that has a battery in it. It's a battery plate like I have on my C500, but it has a 45 watt hour battery built into the battery plate. So it's enough to charge everything while you swap batteries. So if you're doing long recordings, uh, you can basically swap batteries and not have to cut. The Nanlite Pavoslim were announced in a, a 240 version. So um, a much larger foldable Pavoslim. Uh, I have the 120 and the 60. It's cool to see this same form factor, uh, this very thin, uh, rigid 
LED structure getting bigger and bigger. I wonder how you can also gang them together to get truly massive, very bright outputs that fold up and fit into a case. Adobe announced that Premiere Pro has Firefly capabilities built in, which is their AI text to image, or in this case, text to video. So you're able to say, you know, highlight a something on the wall that you don't want and have it replace it and track it with the movement. So rather than going through a third party, it's now built into Premiere. Last but not least, uh, the only thing from Canon is a lens called the CJ27EX 2.3B. Uh, it's for micro four thirds broadcast like ENG cameras. Uh, it has some crazy zoom ratio, like seven to 300 millimeters, uh, but it costs $30,000. It's mainly gonna be for professional sports, like shooting NFL or something. So of course, everyone's disappointed that we didn't see a new cinema camera. Even R5 Mark II would be something great. Canon is keeping their cards close to their chest and we'll see what happens next. If you wanna find out more about how you can improve your lighting, cinematography, your blocking, and how to get the most out of your cinema camera, check out Canon Masterclass. I have a ton of courses up there. You can buy them individually or subscribe to the entire site, over 30 courses for one low price. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.